Lactation is a very important process in pig production. The lactating sow or gilt is the sole source of neonatal piglet nutrition and immunity. It's essential for providing baby piglets the ability to grow and thrive. This educational video will discuss the basics of swine lactation, troubleshoot any issues that may arise, and demonstrate methods for milk collection. Females have paired mammary glands located in two parallel lines on the underside of their body. The total number can vary from 12 to 22 glands. Gilts selected for breeding replacement should have at least 14 normally placed nipples in order to nurse piglets. Each mammary gland has two separate lobules that secrete milk. Each lobule system is made up of lactocytes that produce milk. After the milk is made, it drains into the lactiferous duct and then teat canal. Each one of these ducts has a separate opening, outwardly visible as two orifices on the end of the teat. However, there is no muscular closure on this teat orifice, so you can't treat mastitic sows with intramammary medications as in bovines. Most mammary gland development occurs the last one-third of gestation. The middle glands are the ones that grow the largest, and the smallest ones are posterior. During this time, there is a large shift in the makeup of the glands. They switch from depositing fat to depositing protein and developing the lobuloalveolar structures needed for lactation. Estrogen from the placenta is the main hormonal influence for the rapid mammary growth that occurs during pregnancy. Estrogen levels increase as gestation progresses, especially in the hours prior to parturition. Prolactin from the pituitary gland also helps the mammary tissue grow, as levels begin to climb about a day before the sow gives birth. There are two stages of swine lactation. Stage 1 is immediately prior to birth, when mammary glands are producing antibody-rich colostrum. The sow may appear to be producing a large amount of milk. Only colostrum is contained in the glands at this point. The junctions between mammary epithelial cells are not tight, so serum transudate can leak into the mammary secretions. However, most of the immunoglobulins for colostrum are made locally in the mammary gland. Unlike other dairy species, colostrum is not easily secreted from the gland until you get oxytocin released with the birthing process. Stage 2 of lactation is marked by the onset of copious milk secretion and a decline in colostrum production. A prolactin surge at the start of farrowing is needed to begin stage 2. Oxytocin is also being secreted at this time in increasing amounts, both as a result of birth and piglet suckling. Therefore, the large amounts of milk being produced can be let down because oxytocin is being secreted from the pituitary gland. Females will keep producing milk in increasing amounts given proper suckling intensity. This depends on the frequency of nursing, litter size, and the age and size of the piglets. Repeated milk removal is the major factor in maintaining lactation. Mammary epithelial cells produce a negative feedback inhibition factor that accumulates in the mammary alveolar lumum along with milk. When both milk and inhibitory factor levels are high, the gland is held back from producing further milk. After a piglet has eaten and emptied the gland, the factor inhibition is gone, signaling more milk synthesis. A sow's overall milk production is a result of several different factors, age, parity, stage of lactation, body condition, and nutrition. Milk yield is more difficult to estimate in swine given that it is so closely tied to oxytocin release. It has been estimated that a first lactation gilt with 10 piglets produces between 22 to 26 pounds of milk per day. Swine milk is composed of 18% lactose, 22% protein, and 60% fat. A larger litter has greater total milk production. Each individual pig may receive less milk and have a smaller gland, but the total amount of milk is greater. Also, heavier piglets stimulate greater milk flow at suckling. They have a stronger suckle action, causing a greater oxytocin response. This flow chart demonstrates how bigger piglets are related to increased milk production. Bigger piglets will consume more milk and have a stronger suckle reflex, causing a greater oxytocin release. This means more milk is produced, which in turn means more milk is available for the piglets to eat and grow. These factors are all positively correlated.
The sow's milk production generally peaks at 18 to 21 days post farrowing. Normal, healthy litters generally suckle every 45 to 60 minutes, or about 30 times per day. It takes the sow about 35 minutes to refill her mammary gland in preparation for the next lactation time. Sow milk ejection is highly controlled with oxytocin and prolactin playing very important roles. Both of these are released as a result of vigorous nuzzling and suckling from the piglets. The sow has a very high threshold for the release of oxytocin and therefore milk letdown. This is why we see piglets very active for a long time around the mammary gland relative to the time they are actually receiving milk. Milk letdown itself is only about 15 seconds. Teat order within a litter is usually defined within 12 hours after farrowing. As a general rule, one piglet stays with the same one gland. If the pig is removed for fostering, early weaning, or mortality, no other pig adopts this gland and it involutes. Each piglet is responsible for its own gland and it functions independently of the others in the mammary chain. Sows and their litters usually also establish a lactation routine. The sow will grunt to alert pigs she's going to lie down, then lay on her side to expose her udder. The piglets will nuzzle and suckle until the oxytocin is released. Release of oxytocin usually coincides with her peak of grunting. You can usually observe milk letdown when the pigs are not jostling around. They are eating quietly and you can usually hear them slurping and see active swallowing. Remember that this will only last about 15 to 20 seconds. When their milk letdown is finished, they may start testing other teats and becoming more active. This continued suckling and nuzzling action stimulates prolactin and continued milk production. After the first day, sows establish a synchronized milking routine, which may even include several sows in the same room nursing at the same time. Recent studies have shown that glands suckled in first lactation will produce more milk and have a better foundation for redevelopment in the second lactation. Glands that are suckled are larger at the end of lactation than those that were not, and this allows a bigger framework for redevelopment and increased production in subsequent lactations. This is especially true in gilts. Lactation is maintained only by those glands that are actively and continuously suckled. If a mammary gland is not properly nursed or ignored, involution occurs. The gland can still be suckled and productive after 24 hours with no activity, but by three days, the lactation shutdown is irreversible. This is why it's most important to cross foster by day one after farrowing for best success. Since lactation is so essential to piglet growth and health, any dysfunction should be corrected as soon as possible. We will only discuss this briefly for the scope of this video. More resources detailing swine lactation dysfunction are available in the SMEC library. First of all, make sure the sow is getting enough food and water. Milk production uses 65 to 70 percent of the lactating sow's daily energy requirements. Therefore, it is important to get her eating as soon as possible after farrowing so daily increases can be made to properly lactate and feed a growing litter. Sows without clean, available water tend to go off feed, so access to water at all times is crucial. Make sure to check all waters for breaks of clogs in the line. Also make certain the sow has a clean, fresh supply of adequate feed. They generally will not eat moldy or spoiled feed, so if the feeder has not been cleaned out well daily, she may have an aversion to eating. Stressors of any kind will compromise the sow's ability to let down her milk by decreasing oxytocin response and release. Examples of these include endotoxema, cystitis, mastitis, endometritis, and constipation. Environmental stressors such as high room temperature, noise, crate structural and comfort issues. Body condition, fat sows and overmuscled sows. Due to the complex physiological interactions of swine lactation, milk samples are not easily collected as from cows, goats, or other dairy species. The process takes much time and patience. When obtaining a milk sample, a consistent amount is needed for testing. Usually, this would be at least 10 milliliters. In order to maximize the volume, remember natural lactation principles and try to mimic them as closely as possible. Despite trying many different methods, such as human breast pumps or negative pressure with syringes, our experience has shown the best way is to manually milk the sow. Approach the sow quietly when she is already nursing piglets. Gently remove one of the piglets and quickly begin hand milking, trying to mimic the suckling behavior of a piglet. Remember that it takes much stimulation to release the oxytocin necessary for milk letdown, so you will need to use vigorous motions. 
if you are under time constraints to obtain a certain volume, it may be necessary to administer oxytocin IM a minute prior to collection. This concludes the SMEC swine lactation video. We would like to thank the U.S. Pork Center of Excellence for its generous support of this video production. For more information about the Swine Medicine Education Center, please feel free to contact us at 515-294-7692, email us at isusmec at iastate.edu, or visit us on the web at www.smec.iastate.edu.